Calvary. John the writer writes and reminds us that we must, we, we, first of all, we are overcomers, but we must really believe that we are overcomers. So how can we really become overcomers and really understand that we do have the victory? In the history of Israel and in the history of the scriptures, there were some things that they had to do. They had to do to really understand uh, how to get the victory. And so let's look at some of those things for a moment uh, when you look at the life and the history of Israel. Okay, so some of those things were they had to put away their idolatry and their false worship. We worship a lot of things in this earth, don't we? People worship money. They worship their cars. They worship their homes. As a matter of fact, some people stay in their homes uh, because they're afraid someone's going to break in and steal their goods. They can get them anyway because there's no lock made that a thief cannot get in. Amen? So you may as well come on to church and worship. Amen. And not only that, God said what they were supposed to do was serve him only. They were not supposed to serve other gods. I serve God only. You serve me. And, you know, if you walk up right before me, then ask what you will and I will grant it. Okay? What are we asking the Lord? Are we asking the Lord for real things or ridiculous things or things that just doesn't matter to God? For he often gives us what we need rather than what we want because sometimes what we want is not what we need. Amen. And so another way he wanted them to obtain victory was together, together in prayer. I'm getting ready to call a prayer for all of the members of Jerusalem. I want us to come together and I want us to pray. I want us to pray that God would move in a miraculous way in our lives and grant us that that he has for us. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. I want all of us. I want all of us. And I know some of us work. I know we have occupations. But I want, to, I want all of us to come to prayer. Because in the scriptures, they had to fast and pray before going to battle. They had to fast and pray. You remember the story of Jehoshaphat? Remember, they prayed and they fasted. He called the fast. And he said, you know, take away some of those things that you like so well. And let's, let's fast and pray and go before the Lord. You know the story how... Uh, the Bible says that he prepared, you know, the priest, and then he had those singers up front. The Bible says that when they went into battle, uh, the battle was the Lord's. It wasn't theirs because he confused the enemy. And so they gathered themselves together in prayer. I don't care what our differences are. We need to come together in prayer. Isn't that right? Lay aside the differences and come on together and let's pray. And also, there was a time, especially in the book of Samuel, when uh, symbolically they poured out the water and it, it symbolized uh, everyone was pouring out their heart to God that uh, he might hear them and spare them in the time of trouble for there were times when they were challenged with battle and it was more of the enemy than the number of the children of Israel and so they had to uh, represent in ways of uh, symbolism not only that what they did also to gain victory they confessed their sins how many I confess my sins every day those sins of commission and omission, those sins that, you know, I'm not even aware that I'm committing. Sometimes we, you know, commit sin, so we have to confess our sins and ask God to forgive us just in case, you know, we've transgressed in a way, you know, that might offend God. And so they had to come together uh, to confess their sins to gain victory because when you have one going this way and going that way and another going the other way, then it causes confusion. But, you know, together we, you know, together we stand divided, we fall. And so it's important uh, that we understand how to gain victory. And not only that, they depended on the words of the prophets and they depended on the word of the Lord to get them through for deliverance. You've got to really depend on the word of the Lord. And oftentimes I say to people, you know, when I read the scripture and when I preach, get your word, have your word with you. That's your sword. That should too, just in case I misquote or say something wrong or something that just don't match. You know, you've got to have your word with you. And not only that, they offered up sacrifices uh, to gain the victory because they told the Lord, they told the Lord, listen, we offer up these sacrifices to you, sacrifices of thanksgiving for the victory we are going to get. We offer up these sacrifices. Oftentimes I always say, you know, when you, when you do some of the in-depth research on tithing and offerings. The offerings were bought in a form of saying thank you. Thank you for your blessings. 
thank you for how you've blessed. And so when those offerings were created, they were created so that they could come and show God how thankful they were for his blessings. And so uh, they, they obtained, when they did what God said do, they obtained victory whenever they cried out to the Lord. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? And so the writer writes and says that you must believe in God. You must believe that he is. But not only that, remember the Bible says that you've got to believe in the fact that he sent his son to obtain the victory for all of us. He sent his son to obtain the victory. No one else could do what Jesus Christ did. He went down into hell took the sting out of death, hell, and the grave to obtain the victory for us. And so therefore, we have the victory, believers. You've just got to believe that. You've just got to start walking in victory. Someone called me and said, Pastor, pray that I would get this job. I really want this job. Uh, I really want it. So, Pastor, pray for me that I would get this job. And I told them to walk as if you have it already. Walk in victory as if you have it. Now listen, that's not ridiculous, y'all. Don't look at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Because some of them saying, yeah, okay, Pastor, I tried that and it didn't work for me. You know, walk. You don't know when the Lord is going to bless you and bring it about. Walk like you have it. Amen? Walk like you know who you are. You're a believer. Okay? So, Christ obtained the victory that you might have victory over your trials and your temptations of life. I'm learning that more and more, no matter what my challenges are, more and more, and God has to remind me that I have the victory over these situations. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do anything but just sit and get the victory. What I've got to do is put my battle clothes on. I've got to gird myself up and get ready for battle. You see what I'm saying? Battle in my mind, battle in my spirit, and get ready when the challenges come, come back with the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord said, it is written. Come back. Greater is he that is in me than any devil out there. Greater is he that's in me than any talker. Greater is he that's in me. Oh yes, I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. How about you? Greater is he that sent me. So he's given me power to overcome. It doesn't mean that I might, have to, might not have to deal with things, but I'm to deal, it, uh, deal with it like a soldier. That's what he said in Corinthians. Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Stop letting people rock your boat and shake you up. Be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding, always abounding in the word of the Lord. In as much as you know or you should know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He see what you're going through. He know what you're going through. Stand up like a soldier. Go on through your trials and your tribulations. Walk like a soldier. Lord, have mercy. Walk like you know Jesus. Walk like you have the power of God in your life. I'm not defeated. I'm more than a conqueror. Lord, have mercy. I feel good about this. I feel confident about this. So, 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 he says also, the believer has victory over all the forces and difficulties of life. There are some difficult things that we deal with. But again, you've got to be steadfast, unmovable, always bounding in the word and the works of the Lord. I just added a little something. Okay, he's also given us victory over sin. Now, sometimes people say, Pastor, I just can't help it. Yes, you can. 
Yes, you can. It's a struggle, I understand that. But you've got to allow God to do what he needs to do in your life to help you get your flesh in check. Do you know how many times I have to talk to Mary Jackson? Girl, get yourself together. How many times I have to talk to myself? Okay, come on now. Sometimes you've got to talk to yourself and look in the mirror and get yourself together. Yeah, yeah, my brother. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And for all of those who have problems and keep on struggling with substance abuse and things like that, you've got, you've got to stand up to it and tell it, you're not going to conquer my life anymore. Those who have problems, you know, you're not going to conquer. You, 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 should, you should be a winner. You're not going to conquer anymore. You've got to talk to these things and other addictions. Oh, no, we don't want to hear that because that means sacrifice. That means letting some things go that feel good to you. Ah, uh, But he's given us victory over sin. And, that, and we are to walk circumspectly before the Lord every day. You can't walk with sin and God too. The Bible says a little bit of leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Now you can't keep a little bit over in this pocket over here and think nobody don't see it. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily have to see it. The Lord sees it. And he will bring it out into the light. All right, I know, but that's how you're going to get victory, y'all. If y'all want victory, come on. You got to take some of these weights off. You got too many weights on this stuff. Get it off of you. I'm not going to let folk weigh me down. He's given us victory over death. How many of you want to go to heaven? How many of you know you're going to see Jesus? All right, so he's given you victory over death. If this old earthly tabernacle, this body die out, I know that there's a place prepared for me. And so although my body goes into the grave, there's, you know, Christ went down and he took the sting out of death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And I'm going to rise up victoriously. For this mortal body has to put off, you know, mortality. And I'm going to pick up immortality. And so because this flesh is not to be trusted, it can't go to heaven. I know you're cute. I know you're handsome. But your flesh is not going to heaven. Keep looking cute. But be saved. He's given us victory over judgment. Others judge you, but don't let you, don't let that worry, don't, don't let that worry you. Oh, they judge you and they criticize you. And they're always telling you what you ought to do. I sure hope they do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. There is a message that I'm working on quick to feed, but we don't eat very well. Quick to feed, it's easy to tell others. But how well do we eat? How well do we Take it in. You tell others to have faith. What about your own faith? You tell others to live right. What about you living right? You tell others to stop lying. You stop lying. You tell others to stop fornicating. You stop fornicating. You tell others to stop whoremongering. You stop whoremongering. You tell others to stop slip tipping and dipping. You stop slip tipping and dipping. For those who believe in God overcometh the world. I'm just about finished, y'all. I'm just about finished. But I've got, to, I've got to make sure you get victory. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have victory. Victory. He's given us victory over fear and despair. And he fills us with love, joy, and peace. So as I get ready to take my seat, be ye steadfast unmovable always as a matter of fact when you look up some of the definitions of the word be ye steadfast 
that means firm. That means situated. That means, uh, that means remaining in God as you move forward. Now that don't make sense. Uh, be ye steadfast, unmovable. That means when the winds blow, you're still standing although you're leaning. And when the wind starts blowing, you straighten back up and keep on marching. Always abounding in the word and the works of the Lord. And that means keep on getting in that word. Getting in that word until you almost collapse. Sometimes, my sister and my brother, I stay in the word so much that I get tired. And sometimes I feel my strength leaving because I understand that God is taking out and putting in those things that I need so that when I do preach, I can preach victory to somebody else's life. Sometimes I'm laboring in the word of the Lord. And after I finish laboring in the word of the Lord, I said, now God, I've got all this word. Now I need the spirit of the Lord to help me to give it like you want to give it. For I understand one thing, that if I'm going to have victory, I've got to make sure that I understand God's word. Praise be unto God. And if I'm going to give you victory, then I've got to be able to have power to pass victory on in your life. Victory on in your life. But you've got to live right. You've got to walk right. You've got to talk right. You've got to be an overcomer. Remember John repeated it two times. As a matter of fact, he said there are three witnesses. If you go in the word of God, I don't have time. But there are witnesses. There are people watching you as well. And so he says, he that overcometh, you overcome. You overcome the world by your faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the man come to God. He must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, that diligently seek him. He's no joke. He's for real. Yes, he is. Victory. Victory in Jesus. Do you have victory? Do you have victory? Like they used to say, show enough victory. That's what they used to say. Victory in Jesus. Yes, Lord. And let me take my seat. The psalmist in the 119th Psalm. It's one of the longest psalms in the scriptures. Read it in your spare time. Because there are 18 different secrets to victory. You go get it. Don't let me give it all to you. You go read it for yourself. Don't let me give it all to you. But there was one of them. One of them is a good prayer life. A real good prayer life. For the writer said, I don't want to transgress against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to do the Father's will. So church, you have victory because Christ gained the victory for you. But the rules of conduct belong to you. You've got to walk in victory. You've got to talk in victory. You've got to live a victorious life like he planned for you. The road map has already been laid out for you. Read it for yourself and you will see. Victory. Victory. You can't let nobody stop you from being victorious. Because Christ, you're letting folk, what folks say, what they do and how they act. And, oh, yeah. You have the victory. In Jesus.